Hey you guys, this is Andrea from VW Family Farm. If you are new here, I wanna welcome you to our channel. If you've been around for a while, thanks for tuning back in and checking out this video. Uh, this has been a video that I've been making for a while. Uh, you're gonna see me sit down with some of our dear friends from YouTube that make YouTube videos. We, we filmed about three different channels for you. We, we took this question to them that is one of our most asked questions um, amongst people that are desiring to farm or homestead or and or YouTube. So um, this probably gets asked quite a bit in the comments, but also in person conversations, like at conferences and things, people wanting to know how do you go about farming or homesteading and filming it? Because filming makes everything more difficult. And not only that, but Another flip side to that question is, how do you seemingly be successful on YouTube? Um, now, everyone's definition of success is different. Uh, we are, by no means have we ever like exploded, but we consider ourselves very blessed to be where we are on YouTube as well. Um, so we sat down with some channels I know you guys consider wildly successful and asked them this question. How do you go about being successful doing what you do on YouTube and what's your best advice for someone who's desiring to do that. Now you may never have any intentions of filming anything for YouTube, but you might just be really interested in what these guys have to say anyway. We caught up with our friend Chad from Adler Farms at the Ozark Homesteading Conference, and then we sat down with our good friend Jess from Roots and Refuge uh, right before she moved, probably a month ago. And then our good friends Kevin and Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead sent us a clip as well. So I hope you guys enjoy these. Hey, we're Kevin and Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead. Thank you to Ben and Andrea from VW Family Farm for asking us to be part of this video. We've come up with a few things that we think may help you guys in growing a YouTube channel in the homesteading genre. We think one of the most important things is consistency. Make a commitment to your audience and to your family of how many videos a week you're going to do and what days and stick with that for a long, long time. Right, it may be one video a week or it may be seven videos a week, but make a plan and stick to it. The next thing is really take the time to learn how to edit videos well. You have to take the time. If this is gonna be something that you're doing for a job, then you need to put the time and effort into really learning how to do your job well. And that goes from everything from the video quality to your audio quality. One thing that a lot of people overlook is the quality of the audio on their channel and you need to make sure that the audio is at least as good as the video. One thing we also want to say is don't expect overnight success. Really slow and steady wins the race and while you're chugging along, plugging along, there might be other people who give up. Well don't give up, keep going. Right, it will take several years before you really see the growth of your channel take place, but it is worth it. And then the final piece of advice that we have, which may seem a little counterintuitive, is don't spend much time watching YouTube. <laughs> By that I mean don't worry so much about what other people are doing on their channels. Be true to yourself. Do videos and content that are about what you're doing on your homestead and your farm, and people will enjoy seeing it. Just don't worry about what other people are doing. If you try to wait to do a tomato video till nobody else has done a tomato video, you're gonna have to do it in the middle of winter because everybody's tomatoes ripen at once. So be true to yourself and do videos that are true to your farm. All right, so y'all know this lady. This is Jess from Roots and Refuge, and we're asking everybody a couple things that you could recommend to a homesteader that also wants to YouTube how to be successful in that if you have a couple I know that's super broad question yeah. but so I have a kind of it's it's kind of a weird answer I guess um, the thing is is that the YouTube market for homesteaders has become extremely saturated over the last few years there's yes. new channels all the time there are literally thousands of channels now mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people will say, well, how do you do this and be successful? 
but I would get the priority strike that first and foremost you're going to do it for yourself mm -hmm. and you're going to create something that's going to have value to you first mm -hmm. because the fact of the matter is like not everybody is going to become a massive channel not everybody is going to make it into a full-time job but everybody that's turning a turning a camera on themselves on their farm on their lessons on their family they're creating something that five years from now is going to be very valuable to them yes. like my early videos are such treasures to me because my babies were babies is before we built our first farm and like I'm so glad to have that journey documented mm -hmm. and so first and foremost like don't worry so much about oh I need to make the videos that's gonna make me popular make the videos that are valuable to you and truly if you're making something that's valuable to you you can pretty much guarantee that somebody else is gonna find value in it and at that point you're creating something that's authentic and that's sincere and that people are going to want to partake of um, the other thing is again add value to this sphere um, it's really easy again to get in that mindset of what can I do that's going to be popular what can I do that's going to be successful what's going to get views what's going to get subs <laughs> but really if you shift that to the mindset of what can I create that's going to add value for someone else well then that will get views and that will get subs um, because a lot of times if you are just trying to get something that's going to do well, what you'll end up doing is falling into the rut of seeing what other people are doing and you'll end up just doing what they're mm -hmm. doing. And in a saturated market, you cannot do what everybody else is doing. No. But in a saturated market, you're the only version of yourself that exists in that market. So do that well. Yes. <laughs> because it, that's the one thing you've got that nobody else can do. Right. So creating something that's valuable um, to yourself first and foremost and then to other people I think that no matter what happens with your views and subs at that point, that you're going to look back on that and you're never going to think, oh, that was time wasted. You're yeah. always going to think, I'm, I'm glad I did that because it will have created something for you to hold on to later, but also it will help people in the long run. Mm -hmm. And and like you said about looking what other people are doing, then you fall into the comparison game. Yeah. I think every YouTuber goes through that at some point and I had to just move past that early oh, yeah. on because it drove me crazy like well why are they watching them and I did a similar blah, 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 and yeah. it just goes on and on it's miserable oh, yeah. and it's it is such an up and down thing um YouTube is my job I've had a lot of success in it I receive so much joy from doing it I love making content for people but I've definitely had those things of feeling overwhelmed and like oh my gosh nobody likes me anymore like all these ridiculous things that in retrospect you're like that wasn't true. I yeah. was really just feeling down on yeah. myself. And and truly, like, that comparison thing is going to zap the joy out of it, and you will not make something valuable for yourself no. and other people. You'll just get caught up in that that rat race of of competing with other people. Right. And truly, like, we're all doing this to get out of the rat race, not right. to just find a different exactly. one to run in. <laughs> exactly. And I know one thing it's done for me, even if it's never blows up into a massive channel is God used YouTube to give me a voice to use other places like it gave me a voice that I didn't have before to use in like ministry and to mm -hmm. speak and different things that I, I just didn't have it awakened it in me and I'll be forever grateful for that yeah so I shot my last garden tour we're, we're shooting this video here this little clip I don't know when this video is gonna go up yeah but here at our old farm and I mean, I'm not even staying at this house anymore, you know, like we're in the midst of moving and I shot my last garden tour last night. And I mean, I got really emotional, but I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, sharing this on YouTube really taught me how to garden yeah. in a massive way. And now I know I teach people how to garden, but so much of what I learned, I learned by sharing what I didn't know on this platform. Right. And I mean, truly, this garden made me a gardener, but YouTube made me a gardener, really. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would not be who I am if it right. weren't for sharing on this platform. And I'm so thankful for that. And you've planted so many seeds. I mean, I see the comments to you about, you've brought me back to God after years. And like, I see, I want what you have and all that. And I mean, to me, that's massive success. It's, it's huge because we're so supposed to be the church, you know, we're so, so supposed to be this reflection of Jesus and the salt in the earth. Mm -hmm. And and I think, unfortunately, so often as Christians, we hole up in salt shakers because that's where we're comfortable. Because just, I mean, the analogy of being the salt of the earth, what happens with salt when it comes in contact, it changes form mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, like it 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 stretches the salt it changes the salt to come in contact but mm -hmm. ultimately the salt preserves what it touches it changes the flavor of what it touches 
and we have to be willing to make that connection right and I think YouTube has been an incredible opportunity to make that connection um, with people that might not come into a church and they're precious and they're beloved of the Lord and so like why would we not want to do that right. you know I mean and it has changed the way I view people um, because when I was so completely, I mean, I was, I was in ministry before mm -hmm. I did this. That was what I did. And I traveled and I was in contact with so many beautiful people who all thought like me. Yeah. And it has been incredibly growing in a wonderful way for me to be in a lot of contact with people who don't think like me and, and see their beauty and their value. Yeah. Me too. And I'm for so sure. thankful for that. It's opened up a lot bigger world for me. Yeah. Hey, hey. I was, th I was actually talking about this with my cousin this morning because um, we were talking about how I didn't know some things were super southern to say until YouTube. Like, yeah, I didn't know oh, people either. like <laughs> tumping it over. Like, that's not like you tumped it over. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, it spilled because like, yeah. you tumped it. Like, I didn't realize that was like a southern phrase yeah. until I, you know, because. I mean, most of the people I talk to on a regular basis, they they're Southern too. Yeah. <laughs> they're tumping stuff tumping over all summer. <laughs> but it's funny, it opens your eyes because you get like to experience all these different worldviews and it's such a cool thing. And you don't have to be a big channel to experience that. No. You know, there's, there is value in just doing this. And if it becomes a paycheck, awesome. You know, yeah. like if it becomes that. but. That's not the only goal no. in making content. No. There is a community, a very real community that this connects people into, and I think that's so cool. Yeah, I agree. It's hard. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> it, it is very hard. But some be, days you think, I'm, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. And then, oh, I've quit, I've quit so many like 20 ones. times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. I have too. And then you have a bunch of good days, and you're like, this is my calling. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing this. But. And, yeah, it's so valuable. It's just like any other work. It's hard work if you want to be successful, I think. Yeah, oh, truly. Um, and you have to get over that rejection. You have to yeah. challenge yourself not to fall into that comparison. You have to show up when nobody's making you. Like, right. you, you don't get fired from this job if you don't show up. Yeah. You know, you no. just don't grow. Like, you so don't you get have paid to. Or grow. Yeah, you have to, like, motivate yourself. You have to find the joy in it, find the value in it, mm -hmm. and just keep showing up. And you guys have, I know you guys have done that. You've been so yeah. steadfast in it. Our um, growth has been like a snail's pace, but it has been steady. And yeah. it's been, it's something I'm like, if if this is what you have for me and it's going to be slow, I'm just going to keep doing it. And yeah. maybe the big blow up will come one day. Maybe it won't, but it's, it. I do feel like it is a form of ministry for us and I'm committed to it. And I think one thing that you guys have created, and I love looking at other people's channels and like kind of noting how mm -hmm. their audience interacts with them. I love analytics. I just have become so fascinated yeah. with this, but I think you guys have experienced a really, um, a really deep stream you know like yeah. you have you have extremely committed and faithful and precious faithful viewers yes. that really stand with you that's for sure and i really see that and and i think that's extremely um important and precious yes. to have it's very valuable to us and we're very thankful yeah i'm chad of adler farms uh right in smack in the middle of southwest missouri um, and where are we now we're in missouri we're in missouri we are <laughs> We are actually at the Ozark Homesteading Conference, and we wanted to ask you, we probably our most asked question is, how to do all this farming, homesteading, but also how to be successful on YouTube. It's kind of a flooded market in some ways, and so how to, how to start a channel and then be successful at it. I think it's, um, and we talked a little bit about it before, but I think when you start off, the one thing people miss, and again, I'm not an expert, you guys, you say that as well. We don't yes. need to be experts in anything. But consistency, you know, never be afraid to not know something. You know, your guys' knowledge is way beyond YouTube, you know. I mean, you, you, well, but you knew it. You started YouTube to kind of show what right. you do. Right. Um, if YouTube went away, you'd still do it. Exactly. It's still something you love. It's a passion. And I would say mine started that way too. Um, my oldest boy does not care about sports, which goes against everything I did growing up, but he didn't care about it. And one day I was just like, you know what, let's get some chickens and some goats, see what happens. Goats still drop me nuts, yeah. we got them. 
but don't be afraid to try something new. And you know, I got it. I, I started the channel to start vlogging, and so the boys could go back and watch that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's a. Uh, <laughs> to balance the success of a homestead, it kind of depends on what you're doing too, you know, like you guys have your own beef line. Right. So, you might call that a farm. Right. It is a farm, I know. Right. But, to me, it's all for our consumption and my family, mm -hmm. so I'd say it's more like a homestead, but, so to me, being successful is, I'd like eggs every morning, right. where they came from. Or at least what the chicken ate. Exactly. Um, things like that. And then as far as YouTube goes, the consistency, being real. Um, you know, I've been watching you guys for longer than I had my channel. But my, my first bout with you guys was that Eggmobile. Yes. The giant, yeah, I yes. found him and this beard. Yeah. And I was like, okay, before I start you tell, I gotta grow a beard. <laughs> and, uh, it's required. It's required. But that's when I found you guys. And I was like, man, I wanna do that too. I, I, I do. I wanna just jump in both feet see what happens and then you just have to be consistent yeah I think that's a big key is consistency yeah and I noticed about about you guys channel too is and we didn't talk about this off camera so nobody can think anything but um, your guys channel the education you guys bring to the plate I remember one video where you talked about how well let me backtrack a little bit and you can leave this in there I had to call a rooster or two recently because they uh -huh. were just, they were turds. Yeah. They were. Yeah. But I keep going back to this video you had where you talked about how, was it your, somebody helped you call a chicken or process one on a Sunday randomly in your kitchen. Oh yeah, my dad. Your dad, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. But you talked about how, you know, hey, 30, 40 years ago, that was Sunday dinner. Yeah. Y'all left church, oh, yeah. you went home, and yeah. the gold one was up. Yeah. The red one was up. Yeah. It was just, that's what yeah. it was. And I think people, I like bringing that back to the plate. Yeah. You know, I've got like six roosters right now. I don't need six roosters. So I yeah. really don't want one. Exactly. But, Me neither. <laughs> you know, you just don't be afraid to show that stuff. Be real. Uh, you're going to catch flack. You can't be perfect. No. Um, so that's the YouTube side of it. Just don't be afraid to show what's going on. Yeah. I, uh, and I think if you try to please everyone and kind of be fake, it will catch up with you. It does. It does. And it's, it's very hard to not want to sound like you know what you're doing. Right. But I really think, as far as my channel, what I can speak to is I'm not afraid to tell people I don't know. Right. <laughs> I reached out. I've said that quite a few yeah. times. Yeah, there's no shame in that. In anything no. in life. Yeah, no. Um, I reached out to Ben, and I've actually got a video where we, uh, well, I used your likeness. I used your beard yeah. in my thumbnail. But when I couldn't figure out that uh, Gallagher fencing system we both use, right. you're the first person I went to. I think I messaged, uh, it's Emily, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Messaged her on Instagram because that was the only line I had to you guys. And thankfully, she went and found you and showed you because I, I literally sent a video message. I was like, dude, yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. They don't respect my fence. Yeah. Set the other. She's and like, think, Dad, this really nice guy I needs your help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. But she sent me your number and we called and, you know, talked a little bit. Hey, what's going on? And you basically told me you'd eat that steer yeah. as soon yeah. as I found him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But having two and needing to get them to a processing date, I, I uh, appreciated the advice of getting them used to it. We put them in a smaller pen, made them respect the wire before we gave them right. four or five acres. And it's just don't be afraid to show that stuff. Oh, yeah. Nobody um, knows it all. No, no, no. And Hold nobody's on. perfect. No. Everybody's eating McDonald's every once in a while. I mean, if you fake it and act like you're perfect, it'll, they'll catch you in the McDonald's line or something. It'll catch up with you. <laughs> I'm real. I'm not shy about showing off my organic honey buns I have for breakfast. Yeah. Those come from Casey's. Those are special made. Yeah, those are the but, good ones. No, it's it's uh, I'm I'm very fortunate. I got hooked up with Tartar. And yeah. I have some real shiny gates. Yeah. But the gate to my garden is a pallet. I turn it on its side. The gate to both my basically my chicken run is about two acres but every gate is a pallet turned on its side it's, it works it works they can jump over it anyway yeah they don't care if it's, they're gonna they're gonna go to the bathroom on it oh yeah whether it's shiny or not oh yeah probably more if it's shiny oh yeah and uh just not afraid to share that stuff it's, yeah it is what it is you know, that's awesome just be real be real i like it
So you probably heard some of our thoughts as we sat down with these people and as we talked to them. And I agree with everything all of them said. They gave some great advice. And I just wanna encourage you guys that if this is a calling that's been placed on your life to film some things, no matter if it's about farming, homesteading, or something totally different, go for it. You've got nothing to lose. I mean, it is, it's opened up a world to us of so many blessings beyond just YouTube that I would tell anyone, if you feel a desire to do it, go for it and then commit to it like a job. Because our first year on YouTube, we were inconsistent. We would go for weeks at a time without uploading anything. People weren't watching. We felt like we were filming for no one but ourselves. And that's how it's going to be at the beginning. But you can push through that. You just need to think of it like you already have an audience and you're filming for them. And everyone has to do that. Everyone has to go through it. And it's frustrating and it can get um, kind of lonely and boring and it can feel futile. But I encourage you, if it's a calling that you feel, go for it. And it wasn't until we implemented some of these things you heard on this video that things started to click for us. Being consistent, showing up like it was a job, doing it anyway, even when I didn't feel like it. So I would encourage you guys, um, go for it. Go for it and commit to it and do it. And, and I think you'll be successful. Um, you do need to, over time, improve the quality of your work. Everyone's got to start somewhere. You're going to be awkward on camera. You're going to probably make some videos you're embarrassed of. But as long as you're improving and improving your craft, you're heading in the right direction. I want to end with this. I know this is probably true for you guys. I know it is for me, jobs I've worked in the past or that Ben has worked in the past. If you look back at those companies, some of the people in management and leadership and that have moved up the ladder, are simply the people that stayed, that were loyal and committed and they stayed with that company. They might not have even been the best employee at the time that you worked there or I worked there, but they were committed and there's a lot to be said for that. And, and sometimes what it takes to be successful is just sticking it out and doing it when no one else wants to. So I just encourage you, do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. God bless.